Hello, what's up? Oh, you want to see how I built ThunderClan territory? Well then, let's get to it. Oh yeah and happy Pride Month. Now that I finished the terrain in the last two videos of this series, I was going to do ThunderClan territory. Also go check those videos out. Link in description. Because ThunderClan was focused on most in the books I figured it would make sense to do it first. And if you haven't read these weird books about feral cats running around in the forest, I'll break it down for you. There are five clans of cats which live in the wild. But currently for this map only four are here because some beef happened between some of them. Anyways the cats living in them have roles. Warriors, which are your regular adults that fight and hunt for their clan. Medicine cats, which are the doctors. Leaders, which lead their clan. Deputies, which are second in command to the leaders. And apprentices which are being taught to be either warriors or sometimes medicine cats. And that's kind of it. Unless you count queens that basically spawn babies everywhere. There can only be one leader and one deputy. And the clans fight each other all the time. Though I probably should have explained all that in the first episode. Now I'm actually going to build the territory. I started by logging into the world. Then I headed over to the ravine where ThunderClan lives and planned out everything I was going to do in my head. Based on the graphic novels I knew High Rock was going to be in the middle of the camp, so that was figured out. I guess I wanted to make it so the dens would be easily accessed by everyone, and that means they were just holes jutting into the wall. When I finally got the plan for the camp figured out, I started to build. I built a big rock in the middle and hollowed part of it out for the leader's den. I made sure that the top of it was flat, and that there was a spot for the deputy. The caves and cliffs update came in handy for dens because the moss carpet they added is great for bedding. Which of course to add texture I used full moss blocks as well. With that aside, I made some stairs for cats to easily get in and out of the ravine. For the first den I decided to do the nursery. I actually wanted it to be higher up than the other dens to make the camp more interesting. I added tons of greenery outside of it to make it extra protected and more hidden. I made it softer by placing moss everywhere. And I added mossy stairs so people can actually get to it. For the next den I did the apprentice's den which I built a little bigger because it would hold more cats. The den had a lot less greenery because it did not need to be as well protected as the nursery. While I was doing this, for some reason there was a cat just chilling in the camp. I had to listen to it meow every 5 seconds for 2 hours, and it only got worse after I added the pressure plates. I scouted a place to put the warrior's den and found a perfect spot in the wall. Then I started actually building it. I made it super big because there are a lot of warriors in Thunder Clan. It was basically just a bigger version of the apprentice's den. Then I made a den for the elders, which was almost exactly like the apprentice's den. I added a fresh kill pile for the clan's food, and I made sure that it was close to the nursery and elder's den. Then I experimented with invisible item frames to add things around camp. I added things like melon seeds to make it look like dirt was scattered around. This is how I remembered to make the dirt place. Then I added a feather in moss balls for kittens to play with. I also used green dye to look like leaves. Turns out that when you rename something and put it in an item frame, it will show the name you gave it when you hover over it. I used this to make names for all the dens and places in camp. Then I added extra details like stone buttons and pressure plates to give the ground more texture. Now I felt I had finished the camp, but something's off. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, right, the medicine cat den. I completely forgot about it. I dug out an area for it in a small tunnel for the medicine cat nests. Then I wanted to do something cool for the herb storage, and I decided that a chest looked really out of place. So I covered it with a dirt block and created a switch to remove the dirt block so you could get to the chest. I figured that I should have a system so the herbs don't get stolen. So I used commands to lock the chest. But why would you do all this if there aren't any herbs in Minecraft? I'm getting to that part. I figured I could use regular plants as the herbs. Though the only problem with this is that they don't heal you. So I decided to use commands for that. Basically, when you hold the herb in your hand, it gives you an ability like a health boost or whatever. To do this idea I needed to use command blocks. I dug out an area underground and placed them there. Then I typed in the commands. Each herb was supposed to have different effects. Most if not all of the herbs in the books are meant to heal, rather than give the person who eats them strength. With the exception of traveling herbs. This means it was difficult to add stuff and a lot of them ended up just having health boost. I made a bunch of different herbs for this including. Tansy. Cobweb. 
poppy seeds, and other stuff too. With the medicine den done and the herbs for it, I now felt I had actually finished the camp so I started on the rest of the territory. I decided to do the sandy hollow after that, so I dug out a ditch. I made an oval-ish shape for it and replaced the dirt with sand. I didn't want it to be too deep and rather just a small depth. For the sand I used two different types because variety, and I added tall grass on the outside. I then built a place for the mentors to watch the apprentices train. This was a shady spot under a tree with moss. I made sure not to add anything that could be harmful to the apprentices training there. After I built that, I figured I was done with the sandy hollow. The next place I decided to build was snake rocks. The snakes with the rocks. I started building rocks with stone then added more variation in them using andesite and cobblestone. I built a bunch more there and then dug holes in them for snakes. I didn't know how I was going to make snakes for snake rocks but I had an idea to put something in an invisible item frame. I figured that a chain would look good as the links kind of make it look like it has scales. So I settled with that. I added rocky and sandy ground beneath the rocks. And I felt I had finished snake rocks. Since I had only a few herbs done I decided to make more. Starting with death berries. Even though they don't heal anyone I figured it would make sense to add them so I used regular sweet berries and used commands to kill you when you held them. Unfortunately because of this I died multiple times when adding more herbs. I also added others like borage and burdock root. When I felt I had added enough I went around the territory and placed the herbs in their correct places. Also here is a guide on the herbs and where they can be found. I felt that the territory was done now so it's time to end the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.